Hello, everybody, and welcome to Press B to Cancel. I figured eight episodes deep might be time to jump into a topic reflecting the podcast's namesake, Press B to Cancel. So, with that in mind, we're going to be talking about Pokemon today to cancel that evolution. Wait, what? Sorry, I just had to do that. I was trying to think of something witty. Jingle, jingle, magic keys make Oog feel all better. <laughs> We need to rant, rant. Okay, so here's our intro. Now you may continue. <laughs> Arthur will be very proud, I'm All sure. Right, so <laughs> today's episode, I know I normally do things a little bit more uh, structured, but today I'm going in a little bit more freewheeling. So we're going to discuss things a little differently, but I'd like to start with uh, Pokemon's beginning in the West. So. I remember seeing, I w- I'd kind of gotten into import games and stuff like that shortly before Pokemon released in the West, and so I remember seeing Pocket Monsters merch at import stores and stuff. There was a place I used to go called Game Cave in uh, Southern California. I don't think it's around anymore, but I'd I'd go there once every month or two, and I'd just see all this Pocket Monsters crap, wall scrolls, stickers, cards, you name it, it was there. And I was like, what the heck is this? And they tried to explain it to me, and I just didn't get it. About a year or two later, it finally released in the West. And I remember seeing a news story on TV about Topeka, Kansas, changing its name for a day to Topeka, Kansas. Nintendo, I'm guessing, threw a big sack of money at Topeka, Kansas and said, hey, we want to change the name just for a day. Have a big old event there kick off the Pokemon North American events in Topeka. And they were like, yes, please. So they had people, I'm pretty sure they had, (laughs) pretty sure they had people dressed in Pikachu outfits and they had the, the fleet of 10 Volkswagen Beetles done up like Pikachu that said, got to catch them all on the side. And from there, they just started sending those Beetles out to everywhere in the North America to do the events. Do any of you recall that at all? No, but I just find it weird they didn't do uh, Togepi, Kansas, because Togepi's a, a cute little Pokemon. But I think Togepi was Generation 2. Oh, that shows you the extent of my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I, I do remember this. Uh, as somebody who lives about two hours south from... I love that we're saying Topeka. Sorry, everybody in Kansas says just... <laughs> Topeka, like it's T A P E K A, but it's it's spelled Topeka, uh, but it's like Quebec or Quebec. It's Topeka, yeah. but I love that you say oh, okay. it's like saying Comanche instead of Comanche. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Gotcha. But no, I, I remember this and trying to figure out why the heck I should care about it because it got you know, like you said, national coverage and all this stuff. It was a big deal, and I just remember how do you want to say it? It looked and seemed so bizarre. Yes. And it seemed like not just the people my age were getting into it, but it was these adults, you know, wandering or not wandering around, but stomping around in, in these these thematic and brightly colored anime type shirts. And to that point, all I'd ever really seen of like anime and, and that kind of stuff was Dragon Ball. So I'm like, why are we not having a Dragon Ball Z day? What the hell is Pikachu? <laughs> but so, yeah, so I, I remember the event from Topeka, but I, I just remember being... Like, bewildered and confused. Yeah, I was just, I was not into it at all when I had first heard about it. And then I saw this news story, and I was like, and I I lived in Vegas at the time, so it got that far, at least. I was like, what the hell is Pokemon? Like, why is this such a big deal? And then, I think I had a Nintendo Power subscription at the time, so when my Nintendo Power came in, they started, like, really hamming it up with Pokemon and everything. And I was like, huh, okay. I, I kind of see, and then I got a little curious, and I think uh, because of the craze, my parents decided to get a copy for both me and my brother. Interestingly enough, they got us both blue. I was about to ask, <laughs> did they get you the same color each? Because <laughs> that would be just yeah. Oh, God. So uh, we there were, yeah we had a we had a house without a few Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> But I I remember I was so into that game at the time. I played the crap out. I was playing it on Super Game Boy mostly because I I lived in Vegas. I had lived there for a short while, didn't really have any friends. So I wasn't 
I wasn't playing it at school. I just played it at home, so I didn't care. I got super into it. I, I'm pretty sure I beat it within a couple weeks, like caught Mewtwo, everything. Or maybe I missed my chance to catch Mewtwo. I think I wasted my Master Ball is what happened. Now, what was I talking about? <laughs> you had missed your chance uh, to get the U. Oh, yeah, yes. I had, I had missed my chance to catch Mewtwo because I blew my Master Ball on, I think, Zapdos or something. And so I was kind of disappointed. And I ended up starting my file over and played through the game a second time over the next few weeks to finally catch Mewtwo. Like That's how into it I was. Wait, do you need the Master Ball to collect to catch him? I don't think you needed it, but I think it was such a slim chance to catch him without it that it was just a pain in the butt. Okay, that's fair. I probably tried 25, 30 times and failed every time. I was like, nope, I'm done. Yeah, peace out. Yeah, every time I looked it up, the guides always said, just save your Master Ball from you too if you want him. But see, they'd, they'd sold me on the birds being the legendary Pokemon. I kind of thought I needed the Master Ball for that. You know, I would have probably done the same. I was tricked. Anyway, moving on from that, um, that was my experience with Gen 1. How about you guys? Uh, so my experience with Pokemon, well, see, I was a pretty cool kid in high school. I know, I know, hard to believe. But all the cool kids used to play Magic the Gathering during recess and lunch. So all my friends <laughs> played Magic the Gathering. We played for years. And then I used to do the occasional tournament. I used to be one of those guys who went to the local comic book store. The coolest place on earth, everybody knows. Anyway, after a while, I realized that a lot of adults stopped playing Magic and start playing this new game with colorful, weird, bizarre characters. And I didn't quite understand it. And then one of them mentioned to me it was Pokemon. And then pretty soon, within a month, they stopped doing Magic the Gathering tournaments. They stopped doing Star Wars tournaments. They didn't do Star Trek anymore. They didn't do miniatures. All the, all the grown men were playing Pokemon the card game. It sweeped my area. Like, I've never seen anything be such a fad before for single, lonely, middle-aged men in comic book stores. I, I can't believe it. I just, I just like to say that Pokemon is how Canadians say it, just like how we say Mario, not Mario. <laughs> it's exactly, it's, it's the Pokemons, right? <laughs> so my experience was, was here about the, the franchise from that. And then a, a friend of mine showed me an episode of the cartoon and uh, kind of went from there. And after the cartoon, I watched a few episodes of the cartoon, which we can talk about later. But from there, I tried the video game and actually got quite hooked on the game. But I didn't play Pokemon until a couple of years after the fad kind of hit. And I was probably considered too old for the franchise. I was not a kid when I played the first game. <laughs> but it, for an RPG, I've always been a fan of RPGs. And despite the, you know, the aiming at a lower, younger audience, the game is quite good. It was a very solid game. Uh, challenging in parts. Collectible hit all right, uh, you know, the itches for you. And it's great. A lot of fun. See, I, I'm... Like from nowhere in the middle of nowhere. So uh, <laughs> we were always late when it came to getting games like that. So I remember reading about it in magazines, of course. And uh, the show actually I caught first before I actually played the game. And I was like, okay, I'm not a big anime fan, but this one caught my attention. I was probably in grade eight going to grade nine. Maybe I was in grade nine, something like that. So it was just, just catch my attention. I was like, this is kind of cool. And, uh, of course, when I watched it, the show made no sense because it was never aired in order. So I remember seeing probably the end of the season first, and then like, then I see Ash start off, and you know, so it got really confusing. Um, but I remember one guy had the game, and he had both of them. He had one Game Boy, he had two of the games, and he had the transfer cable, but he didn't have another Game Boy. So he gave me, I think, Red to play, and so that was my first experience. I was like, okay, let's try it. And I was like, okay, where do I get Pikachu? You don't have Pikachu? I was like, oh, you know. And so, you know, I chose Squirtle because I was like the water Pokemon, Pokemans over the fire ones. And uh, I just remember it was really fun. And I wasn't expecting it to be so, uh, I don't know what the word is. Like, it's so straightforward. Like, it felt almost like a beginner's RPG, I thought, in my head at first. But then... It had like some very simple strategies and stuff, but it was easy for me to catch on to. And it was just kind of addicting right right from the get-go. And it's just, I remember playing it. I don't know how far I got because I didn't own it. And then, you know, my friends like deleted my game so he could play it. And I was like, damn it. <laughs> but uh, 
I just remember seeing a meme about 10 years later and all it shows the intro screen like when you first start a new game and it says no matter what you do you'll never be able to experience this the same as your first time <laughs> and it was like ripped from like you know it's supposed to be like your first time with a significant other <laughs> but they basically did it and <laughs> they dressed it up to make it look like a pokemon meme and i thought that was hilarious and ever since then like the intro to the very first game i always thought was really cool because of that it's just like a very personal feel to it and i'm not even that huge uh, a pokemon fan so uh, i just thought that was really nice i thought they had they couldn't have nailed it better i growing up had been into like tabletop type games like Hero Quest and like X Men, Mutant Chronicles, and all those kind of ones. And I had a yeah, right. <laughs> I, I was just slaying Poon left and right. <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't say that. Uh, I was twelve, but um, I had a friend who had just a ton of Pokemon cards. And at the time, I was living in Missouri, and he he tried to show me the game and explain it to me. And I'd stayed the night over at his house one night. And I loved it. Not enough to go out and, and buy him. I didn't really see the need because my friend had him. Uh, but I, I loved, you know, doing like the decks. And, and, you know, it was back when you played with like the, the marbles or the baubles or whatever they're called, you know. And all, just all these things. And I, it was completely new and, and awesome. And then he, of course, went out and he just had all the Pokemon stuff. So he ended up getting the first two um, Game Boy games. Forgive me for not remembering exactly which colors they were. Uh, and I, I played one or both of them. Uh, I don't exactly remember which, but I, I loved him. And then all of the Generation 2 stuff started happening. And I immediately lost interest. It was almost like Mega Man 7 came out all over again. And I, I just, <laughs> to me, it was already this big, well thought out thing. And now I've got more that I have to learn. And I just, I honestly, hardcore fell off after Generation 2. And it was kind of the same with Pokemon Go, if we end up talking about that later. Pogo came out and I loved it until like Gen 2 came out. And then I'm like, well, that's it for me. But I, the, that's my memory of it. And I loved it. Yeah, I, I got to say I'm the same way. I, when I played the first one, I was like, I'm the kind of guy that wanted to go for all all of them. And I knew I couldn't because, you know, there's multiple playthroughs. and I knew I'd have to do it all myself because there was nobody to trade with. I was like, I just couldn't do it. And then I found out you can do it all over again with the next next game. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 sorry. <laughs> you mean I got to walk more? Man. <laughs> See, I was I was actually excited about Gold and Silver when it when I first learned about it. I was I was on board. But then a friend of mine got both of them. And he played through one of them, and then while he was playing through one, he was like, you can borrow the other one for a while if you want. And I was like, all right. So I borrowed it for about a week or two. I tried playing it for a little while, and I got so annoyed with the fact that not only was it across different versions, but now the Pokemon only spawned at certain times of day hmm. and under certain weather conditions. I guess the game oh. had weather. I don't remember if, that's, if that was implemented in that one yet. But even just the morning daytime and nighttime completely threw me i was like dude <laughs> i have other things to do throughout the day i can't be expected to play pokemon to try and catch a specific one at a certain time i'm not gonna fire the game up at three different times in the day to try and catch a certain thing or see if something different appears exactly. like it was just outside of the realm of reality for me being a high schooler it's like okay first off Morning and afternoon are just not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I used to work night shifts, so I was trying to catch Pokemon in the daytime. I'm supposed to be sleeping. No, thank you. I think that's uh, one of those things that would be really good in theory more than execution. Like if they had like an in-game clock, maybe. Yeah, I thought it was a great idea, but it was not practical. But, right. And the reason they would never do that, like with an in-game clock, and we've kind of talked about this before, Simon's Quest. And that's all I'll say. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll leave that there. All right, now, all of a sudden, we need Pokemon Gold and Silver Redacted. Oh, yes, that'll play. Well, I, okay, I got a question then. 
So if Pokemon were available during night and daytime, Pokemon generally is targeted children. Kids have to sleep at night. So doesn't that kind of skew the game to either keeping kids out of bed or kind of doing a, doing a nod to adults who are a fan of the series? It's kind of interesting. I think, yeah, I'm not sure. I believe the timing on it was from something like 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. was considered morning. And then 11 to 6 or 7 was day. And then after that was night. Okay. Was this like based on your console's time zone? Like how did it work? On Your cartridge actually had an internal battery that maintained the time of day. Oh, okay. Which one... Uh... Which game was the dinner time Pokemon? Because that one would be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just send it to my friends on the West Coast. Hey, hook me up. So I I did get into the card game quite a bit, as Jake touched on earlier. Um, I had some friends who played Magic, but I didn't have any Magic cards. And I had some other friends who liked Magic, but they also didn't have Magic cards. And we all kind of felt like, well, it's a little late to jump on the Magic train at this point. Everybody's got these badass decks. We can't really keep up. So let's try Pokemon. It's got one set out right now. There's 150 cards. Won't be that hard to start getting into right off the bat. So we did that. And I do believe at one point I actually collected the entire first set. And then... Pretty much the moment I did it, I was like, all right, well, now I don't want to have all of these anymore. I'm going to start trading them to get the best deck I can make. So away went my Charizard, away went my Venusaur. I started making other decks, and I actually created a deck that uh, was really overpowered that was just water type. It was basically Blastoise and Gyarados to just own everything. We ended up spending so much time playing uh pokemon and we had friends who wanted to join in to start playing with us that we altered the rule set at a t- at a point in time to where we figured out analogs for everything to where it could be played like magic oh nice <laughs> now, now you're talking. that's that's how similar they were is that we figured out a way to where Anything, like if the rule said one thing in Pokemon, you change it to match another rule in Magic the Gathering and you're set. See, Wipe I, off the zero on the <laughs> HP and you've got it covered. I like that because I didn't touch the, the card game, so I could have just went straight into that and played. Yeah, it was it was pretty wild that we did that. Some of our friends were like, well, why are you doing that? We're like, I don't know. We just we played so much Pokemon. Now we want to try it as Magic. <laughs> but you, you could just buy Magic, you know. <laughs> Yeah, but we already had the Pokemon cards. Damn kids. <laughs> Get off my lawn. Plus, that friend and I had uh, art class together, and we never did the actual assignments in that class. So we just blew all that time playing Pokemon or turning it into magic. Were you the kids that were making your own magic cards and Pokemon cards? Cause no, so... no, no. That was another friend of mine. Oh, man. I never tried that. <laughs> I'm no good with Photoshop now, so I can't even do that to this day. So. Oh, no, no. He drew them. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, yeah, from Gen 1, that's kind of where that stood for me. I don't think I touched. So I don't think I touched the franchise again until it hit GBA. And even then, it wasn't the first generation that hit GBA. It was when they remade Red and Blue as Leaf Green and Fire Red. I was like, I haven't been into it for a while. I haven't been able to, but since this is a remake, maybe it'll be able to recapture that that I have been missing with the previous games. And I jumped into it. It held me for a while, I think about 35, 40 hours, and then it lost me again. I never beat it. That's good. That's that's the intro to like an Elder Scroll game right there. I mean, 35, 40 hours is nothing to sneeze at for holding you, but yeah, pretty sure... I mean, I played through 80 hours of the original Blue the first time and then probably another 40 hours to get to the everything the second time, so. Respect. I don't know. I played the uh, Sapphire one on Game Boy Advance because my friend, I'll never forget this. This is what got me into it again because I didn't touch it again like after, like after you said, you know, just kind of dropped off like with GP, you know, you got to do this all over again? No. So uh, I'm minding my own business, working. I was working at a gas station. I was probably 18, maybe 19. My friend came down just to visit me at work. And, like, I'm working in the shack. Like, it's literally 
smaller than a, a sheet of plywood is the shack that I was working in. And my friend came in, so there's barely enough room for both of us to stand up. And he takes his pocket, takes his thing out of his pocket. And I thought it was like a makeup kit. And I was like, you bought makeup? He's like, no, man, it's Game Boy. I was like, what? So he had the <laughs> Game Boy Advance SP, and I never even heard of it. And uh, I goes, what is it? He goes, Game, it's the Advance, it's the Game Boy Advance SP. I was like, okay. And he opens up, he's like, I got Pokemon. I goes, really? And he goes, yeah, they made a new one. So he, he had Ruby in there. And he let me play it. He basically brought it down. And immediately gave it to me and let me play and just like pick up. And I was just collecting stuff for him. And I was playing it for like 40 minutes at work. You know, I'd take a stop to run out and serve a customer and come back in. And I was playing the game. And I instantly was like, this is amazing. This is amazing. <laughs> so, but I didn't have an SP, right? I just had the old school Game Boy that you need to be under a fluorescent light to play. And uh, so he said, you know what? How about I get. I get the original one and you can get one and we'll play. I was like, okay, cool. Cause you know, we could play together that way. And, uh, so we ended up ordering red for him cause he had Ruby and I got blue. We were both playing it. And I was really mad because I had to play out in the basement in my house under fluorescent light while he was in my room in like hanging down, like in the couch that I had in my room. <laughs> and <laughs> so the first thing I did after I went on, I went out to go to school. I went to Walmart, bought an SP, bought a carrying case, bought Sapphire, and started playing it incessantly until Christmas. And then I came back and absolutely wrecked him because he stopped playing after, a month after I left. <laughs> oh, wow. So I, I felt like a king, and I still do to this day. So if you're listening, thanks for giving up, buddy. So Jake and GP, did either of you touch anything else from Game Boy or Game Boy Advance? Uh, no, not so much. I've um, honestly my my exposure after that really um, has been from Twitch and from watching other streamers who uh, have that deep rooted devotion to the franchise, which I, I do admire. But it's it's one of those franchises for me now um, where I get a little bit of nostalgia for the old stuff. I enjoy watching the new stuff, but I don't know that I'll pick it up again. Yeah, I'm kind of on the fence about some of that. I don't think I touched it again until Diamond and Pearl for the DS. And that one held me even less than Leaf Green and Fire Red. So I kind of learned my lesson. And I haven't bought another one since. Now, when Go released, of course, it was free to play. I had a smartphone. My wife had a smartphone. So we were like, sure, let's give it a shot. So we downloaded it and uh, played the crap out of it for about two weeks we were like, our phones were just never-endingly plugged in. Yeah. <laughs> I I invested in um, those uh, cigarette lighter chargers two weeks before. Yeah, so did I'm, we. Now, now I'm a millionaire because of that. Oh, invested in No, we bought some. <laughs> that's that's what I mean by invested in chargers. We, we just bought a couple. If I could retire on used cables and car chargers, I'd be rich by now. <laughs> but uh, for me, I... I also wor I worship the Game Boy uh, Advance SP. I love that system. It's one of my all-time favorite systems, especially for handheld. I think it's king. And uh, what kind of sold me is when I first saw the commercial and advertisements for Fire Red. And just that wave of nostalgia. You know, I had Red. I played the hell out of that game, sure. And then, you know, when the game starts up and you see Ash first leaving town and that heroic soundtrack kicks in, it just nails me. It just hooks me right in. I love the hell out of Fire Red. But then after that, after I, and I played that, I mean, dozens, if not hundreds of hours. But after that generation, I kind of fell off and I didn't touch it for years. And it really wasn't until, um, whatchamacallit? What's the new Game Boy called? Game Boy 3DS. Oh, the 3DS. Whatchamacallit is a chocolate bar. <laughs> right. It's not a Game Boy. Although if you pretend you really hard it. with the power of imagination, it could be. <laughs> but the uh, 3DS, I, I ended up getting a 3DS, and that, of course, every system has Pokemon games. And I played Sun and Moon. I think I played the Moon version. And I enjoyed it. I love how they took the game into 3D a little bit with the models. But they kind of, I mean, they always alter the formula from generation to generation. generation. But for Sun and Moon, they kind of moved away from the idea of going through various gyms to battling gym leaders. Instead, it was this kind of weird Pacific Island, you know, quest fighting and looking for these these special Pokemon to learn from them. It's, it was kind of a weird take on it. I didn't quite get into it. So I actually don't think I ever finished Moon. I got 
a couple hours into it and kind of gave up. And at this point, it, it's not that it's saturated, but you, really, you guys talk about like Pearl and Sapphire and, and, and I just, I don't know what the differences are anymore. I, I think I would be tempted if I ever got like a Super Game Boy, I, I think I would be tempted to find the, the original two and replay them. But aside from that and Pokemon Go, like, you know, Werewolf was talking about earlier, 8-Bit and I, we, we put in so many miles with the kiddos just wandering around Wichita. And we even, we would go and, and take over gyms and like, actually we had one in Topeka to bring things full circle there uh, for a little while. <laughs> Topeka. Topeka. And Topeka. so I, I really did love Pogo when it first came out. And um, again, it's just the, the day Generation 2 dropped. I'm like, man, do I hope they do what they did with WoW Classic, World of Warcraft. Just bring back G1 everything and I'll be happy. I'll go back to it. <laughs> well, I mean, Fire, Fire Red is, is the perfect way to experience the first generation of Pokemon again. It's the same game, just remastered. It just looks better, sounds better. But it's the same gameplay, same story, if you're into that. There was a, there was a story? <laughs> Yeah, I think it added an island that had Pokemon from other generations, like selected Pokemon. But well, that I could do. Pretty much it. I, yeah, I would check that out. Like I said, I loved the game when it first came out on Game Boy. But one thing now, going back to it and watching somebody else play it or playing it myself, is the audio. And it's just because mainly because of the sound is you know so limited on Game Boy. But the low health warning. I remember one time it gave me a headache to the point where I got a migraine. So now I just cringe when I hear it. So I, if I ever play it again, I'm just going to go for Fire Red or Leaf Green. Yeah, it's <laughs> that sound can great. I that is one thing. Video games of from any era when they have that you're almost going to die beep. It just starts to get on your nerves. I don't know oh, yeah. why that's a thing. Like I get it if the game is really in your face with a lot of action and stuff, and it's like beeps to let you know. Zelda is not that fast-paced a game, and they just throw those beeps at you until you get enough hearts. Pokemon is the same way. You're in a turn-based combat. You, All that's on screen is your Pokemon and health bars. You know you're dying. <laughs> in the top 10 worst sounds in video games... I'd agree that the Pokemon death sound is probably up there. Link to the past is probably number one, but Pokemon death is up there. Oh, I'll, I'll put it at number one. It seriously, it, it like werewolf says it grates. And it's just, I think it's just because it's ingrained in my head now at this point where I had that one, one experience and I'm just like, Oh no. What about the Pokemon sound effects themselves? Do you find those charming or just annoying? I thought, Actually, it was pretty impressive to go from watching the show, you know, where they all basically say their own name as how they how they make noises. But then when you actually play the Game Boy game, the original ones, and you know, Jigglypuff makes the the same music, the do 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 do. You know, it they they kept true to that, and I think even with the limited audio hardware they had, it was really impressive. At least with some Pokemon, it did seem like the they were trying to make it almost sound like they they were at least inflecting their Japanese names. Yeah, because a lot so. of them didn't have the same name in the U.S. Like Pikachu and Raichu, pretty much it. At least from Gen 1. A lot of them had very different names aside from that. Anything noteworthy? This, anything um, was popping out at you? I, I think Squirtle was Zenigame. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Rolls off the tongue. Yeah, I'm not hearing the difference. <laughs> my brother had a my brother had a toy that he picked up at some toy store in Florida at one point. And I guess it was an import because all he said was like he hit the button and he'd go Zen Zenny, <laughs> come me. You know, <laughs> so he was saying his Japanese name. He wasn't saying the Western name. My favorite Pokemon is Trash Bag. He evolves in the Trash Fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some Pokemon are just horrifying, like Drifloon. I don't know if you guys know of Drifloon. I do not. I don't remember what generation it came from, but uh, it's a Pokemon that looks like a balloon. And what it does is it hangs out near children to try and coax them into grabbing this, like going and chasing it down. Because, <laughs> oh boy, cute, pretty balloon. I must have a balloon. I'm a small child. And it'll grab their arm and steal them away. Wow, that's like... Uh... It just... 
takes the children away. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Billy's balloon from what is that guy's name? Uh, Don Hertzfeld. With all oh, the little John balloons Blanks. taking the kids up into the sky and dropping them. And- oh, oh, yeah. What? <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> what horror movies are you guys watching? I'm sitting here thinking about Pennywise. Oh, dude, this is a cartoon. Okay, uh, little tangent here. If you guys remember the Pop-Tarts commercials with the really weird people, like the weird-looking hand-drawn yeah, people I, I, where they were like chasing the Pop-Tarts to try and eat uh-huh. them, those were Don Hertzfeld animations uh-huh. for Pop-Tarts. God. <laughs> <laughs> so Billy's balloon was an independent piece he did years before that, where it, it didn't have to be market friendly. It just exists. <laughs> it just exists. I like it. <laughs> well, I, I have to chime in real quick with two things. One, because I just remembered, and two uh, is a callback to a conversation a moment ago. I completely forgot about this until just now. Pokemon Snap. I love that game. Still love that game. That game is rad. You guys can fight me. I don't know if that game is popular or if everybody hates it, but I fucking love it. That's a great That's game, fans. Pokemon Snap. Wait, what? It's- I think Snap is pretty well received. Yeah. Okay, cool. And the other one, the the other comment I have to get in here was about the uh, most hated beeping noise uh, in video games. And I would like to point out the soundtrack to 1942. <laughs> because that doesn't just beep at you when you're about to die. That's just the soundtrack. You know, the real speed run to 1942, you have to blare the soundtrack, otherwise it's cheating. Oh, my God. The real speed run is to beat it in 1941. <laughs> oh. That is some, some Marty McFly stuff that I'm not prepared for. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so, yeah, that was my two cents. Pokemon Snap, thumbs up, 1942, shit soundtrack. When you guys mentioned, like, badly named Pokemon like Drifoon. The one that stands out for me, and Ash, he was a favorite of mine in Pokemon Moon. It's Mimuku. And it's... Let me just read the descriptions from Sun and Moon, just so you have an appreciation for why I like this one. Its actual appearance is unknown. A scholar who saw what was under its rag was overwhelmed by terror and died from the shock. What? After going to all the effort of disguising itself, its neck was broken. Whatever is inside is probably unharmed. But it's still feeling sad. Whoa. It's literally a, a Pikachu. It's a rag on a stick with a cruelly drawn Pikachu face and ears. It's a hilarious Pokemon, as you can tell from its description. What is this thing called? <laughs> Mimiku. It just, it's just hilarious. I, it's sad and disturbed, but a lot of Pokemon origin stories are terrible. Like, they're frightening for a kid's game. What one? Which one was oh, that? Oh, the Mimikyu. Okay. I first saw the moon, but it may have been in an earlier game. Yeah, that thing is nightmare fuel. I love it, though, because it can take a free hit, and then its disguise goes away, and it's basically invisible. It's a ghost Pokemon. But it gets that free hit no matter <laughs> what, so it's a fantastic Pokemon. It's my favorite. Huh. Well, it looks like one of those yarn doll versions of a Pokemon from, like, Little Big World or whatever it was. Oh, Sackboy, yeah. Yeah. Sackboy? Oh, yeah, Little Big Planet. Little Big Planet, thank you. Sackboy was the main character that was his name. of... Oh, okay. I thought maybe it was... a. Uh, Translation difference between uh, the lower 48 and Canada. <laughs> There's a metric equivalent in there somewhere. Right, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, so I, at some point I do feel like it's not that they haven't kept trying when it comes to the naming and designs of some of the late-gen Pokemons, but they have kind of become, forgive me for this, the equivalent of like Stephen King novel plots. <laughs> it's like, are you, are you really trying right now? Is this really, is this really part of what you're? Wa- or are you just joking? Like that's how that's where it's at for me. It's like how how many Pokemon are there as of uh, September 2019? Something like 800. I'm sorry, I, I had a stroke. How how many? 800. <laughs> 807. Damn. Jeez. Yeah. I can barely keep up with 151. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Same. Okay, Pokemon rap. Let's go. One, two, three. <laughs> Anybody? Pokemon, Pokemon, go! Ninja, ninja, rap. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> I just couldn't remember the Pokemon rap, so that's where I went. Omanite Slowpo, Mewtwo, Tentacruel, Pterodactyl. <laughs> that's that's wow. more than we got. We're going to have to pay some yeah. money now, Polsh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> let's, let's let's go make 
Instead of let's go make a toe mimic you instead of toe Pikachu. Oh, speaking of uh, toe Pikachu, they uh, they actually did it again last year in 2018 for the <laughs> 20 year us. anniversary. <laughs> oh God, they did it again. Same city. Yes, <laughs> same city for the 20 year anniversary of it. They did it again for a day. Okay, thought that was interesting. But that that speaks a lot to the mentality of Kansas. Here's what I mean by that. Uh, Topeka has to become Topeka Chew. There's a place here that uh, is called Hutchinson, about an hour north of where I live. And that is widely considered as Smallville, what Smallville from the Superman mythos would be if it were real. And so where I'm going with this is the the ideology for Kansas tourism is, hey, come here and we'll pretend it's somewhere else. (laughs) (laughs) It's it's like trying to bring back neon rim sunglasses. They're a terrible idea and tacky in the 80s. To bring them back now in 2019 is just pathetic. It's bad. Is that a thing? I've seen some people wearing them in my city. Every huh. time, every 10 years. Yeah. That they, well, yeah. You see a trend you, like that come back. You say that, but the Matrix is coming back, so that's cool. So it, it's hit or miss. But uh, yeah. It never went away. Yeah. that's If you come into Kansas ever... The state line sign says, uh, welcome to Kansas. We're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Canada of the United States, apparently. <laughs> so, <laughs> moving back onto the Pokemon. Um, I did actually get to try Let's Go recently. Oh, yeah. Uh, my kid got it a while back. My brother actually got him the, the, the Pokeball Plus. So, we started playing that a while back, and... He he loves it. He has a blast with it because he gets to pretend he's a Pokemon trainer, throwing the ball and uh, catching the Pokemon. It's a blast, right? And uh, when we fired it up, it said that there was a gift inside the Pokeball. And when it told us that the Pokeball made one of the sounds that, you know, one of the Game Boy Pokemon sounds oh, from nice. way back when. And, but I didn't know what Pokemon it was. I was like, it's been ages. I don't know. I don't even think I knew which Pokemon made what sound back back then, you know? So we played far enough to see about uh, opening up this gift and seeing what was in it. And then we opened it, and it was a freaking Mew. Oh, wow. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> he's not even at the first gym yet, and now he's got a Mew. Is all it right. all randomized, or does everyone get I, one? I don't know if everybody gets a Mew, or if it's kind of random for rarer Pokemon in general and we just got really lucky or what? No, I use part of I, it. I didn't look into in fact, it. The only way you can oh. get a Mew in that game is if you pay the 60, 70 bucks for the Pokeball accessory. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hmm. Like in the original game, they, I think they gave Mew away. Uh, there's, they usually had some kind of like a public event and they, they would the, let you get access to yeah, it. Yeah, they did mall events all over the place and you had to go wait in line and have your Game Boy and your cartridge and just Fire it up, trade, get your meal. I want to say they did that again recently with um, Sun and Moon or Pokemon Go, one of the two. There's a new one. That, it's literally a, a bolt, like a nut, like a metal steel nut. That's a Pokemon now. I think its name is Meltan. And I want to say to unlock it, you had hmm. to uh, go to one of those events. But uh, I, I do have to say I kind of enjoy how Let's Go plays. It it feels less tedious since encounters with wild Pokemon are just throw balls at it and catch it move on. There's no beating it up to try and catch it. There's sl- just smashing the A button over and over to get it over with. Because every interaction, if it's not a trainer battle, it's over in like 15 seconds, if that. Did you try using a Joy-Con? So that was actually kind of nice. Um, No, we haven't played it with a Joy-Con yet. He's just been playing with the Pokeball Plus. Playing with a Joy-Con, because you can play with two players kind of in that game. I, I play with my kids, and we don't have the Pokemon Ball. But uh, Joy-Cons are hot garbage oh. with that thing. <laughs> and you spend 10 balls trying to hit a goddamn Pokemon. But it's a little... Oh, he catches it every friggin' time with the Pokeball Plus. It's ridiculous. It's a little tiny circle. He's getting excellence. That's amazing. Yeah, I don't know what it is. But uh, he's also playing like five feet from a 42-inch TV that's at his eye level. So Well, clearly he's destined to be a Pokemon master. You should send him outside into the wide <laughs> world with a baseball hat and a backpack and say good luck. Yeah, well, he's not 10 yet. He's only five. He's halfway there. (laughs) Hell, I'm 35, and I'm not ready for that. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so 
let's 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 touch on the anime and the movies a little more. Um, I'm gonna openly admit and uh, open myself up for mockery here. I saw Pokemon, the first movie, Pokemon 2000, and Pokemon. I don't know what it was called. Pokemon Three. I don't know if that's what it was called or something else. The one with Entei. I saw all three of those in theaters. I had never saw a single one of them, to be honest. I'm sorry. What was it? Hin- Hinte? Is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm. It was some big orange dog thing that looked kind of like a Growlithe or an Arc. Well, I'm, I'm, it was bigger. I'm and googling scarier. Hinte right now, and it's it's not popping up anything like what you're talking about. <laughs> That's that was the last one I saw that I was kind of like, eh, I'm done now. And my phone crashed. But. <laughs> But when I when I saw the first one in theaters, I legit teared up. I don't know if you guys have seen that movie, but toward the end. I, I think the only one I saw was Pokemon 2000, and that was at a drive-in theater that was also showing <laughs> Casper. Do you guys remember that with Christina Ricci? That was like the double feature. Yeah. And I think that's sure. the only time I saw Pokemon 2000. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure that movie came well before Pokemon 2000. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying it was topical. I'm just saying that's what was playing. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a classic. Well, for me, it was the uh, less the movies and more the cartoon. The first season of Pokemon, the anime, uh, that's like a guilty pleasure for me. I watched it with my kids not too long ago. And every time Pikachu, I know he's going to be fine. I know he'll never die, ever. But anytime he's in mortal peril and he's just beaten up and he gives that little cry, and Ash clutches him tightly like a baby. I, I shed a single tear every time. I don't care who hates me. <laughs> hates you? Everybody relates to you now. Yeah. Who, who would show hate? Like, how dare you have feelings toward this cartoon? Yeah. It's it's funny how much more prevalent Pokemon is these days than it was when, you know, Generation 1 released. But with Gen 1, they had what two or three musical albums that released with the anime and it was ridiculous and i don't know if they they do that stuff anymore i'm pretty sure it's just the games and plushies mostly at this point in terms of merchandise oh there's all kinds of merchandise yeah like my my brother had one of the cds the to be a master album i'm trying microphone master turn off the tape rock the ghetto blaster <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh that's from, that's some 41 but i went over overseas to tokyo there we actually went to one of the Pokemon centers, but we didn't even, we didn't even need to go to that store. There's Pokemon everywhere in Tokyo. I guess that goes without saying, but from cookies to juice at a vending machine to underwear, like literally everything. And I, I still see a lot of that wow. over here too. I still I still see the occasional Pokemon figurines and toys and stuff. We went to the mall a couple weeks ago here and I saw a little like one of those stands and it wasn't really a kiosk, but it was like a standalone vending machine kind of thing. But it was called a Pokemon Center, and it had a vending machine on one side with a bunch of Pokemon merch in it, and then it had a Pokedex on another side where you could like look at the different Pokemon, and it was kind of wild. Well, I was just actually just at um, the C and E in Toronto. It's it's basically a big fair exhibition, and you have carnival games, that kind of thing. And some of the prizes are obviously knockoff Pokemon merchandise, right? <laughs> and I saw a family like with three kids and strollers, and one of the kids was clutching a. I mean, a gigantic Pikachu. Like, it was probably two, three feet long. It's huge. Wow. And uh, this pair of guys, and I mean, buff, gym-looking dudes, six and a half, seven feet tall, just the toughest guys walking down the street or the the, the avenue. And they see the kid with the, the giant Pikachu, and they walk up, hands on hips, like, yo, yo, where'd you get that Pikachu? And like, oh, the basketball game. Oh, thanks so much. And then they just ran. Ran for the carnival lane <laughs> with the games to get their own Pikachu. Awesome. It just shows you that the generation who love Gen 1 are all like, you know, 30 plus now for the most part and have that just love of Pikachu stuff. Oh, yeah. Pikachu, I mean, they knew that was a gold mine from the get go. It's. <laughs> there was. I mean, to Pikachu, there was friggin' Pokemon Yellow. I think to this day, they still brand pretty much every console with a Pikachu to some extent, even if it's a limited release. Ridiculous. But uh, yeah, I I gotta say, I'm, I, I do like the older cartoons. Uh, there's probably only one line I still remember from the original movie, 
or maybe it was the second movie. I don't know. It was from one of the movies. There was a really bad line. That I was... choose you. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no. Mistake, Ash. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it was the second movie because it was a bunch of people on a yacht. I don't know. It might have been the first movie. I really don't remember. But there's a bunch of people on a boat and you overhear them talking like there's people at different tables eating and talking and it passes by one table and you hear a guy go and i said no i just had crabbies and everybody bursts into laughter <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh my god that is not a kid-friendly joke <laughs> even crabs is a pokemon <laughs> gotta catch them all <laughs> <laughs> well okay here's a question um because i i legit don't know in the Pokemon universe, are there what we would consider normal animals? Like, is there like a uh, like a, a dog, just a regular canine, or is every single animal in that universe a Pokemon? I feel like Generation One, the way we were introduced to Pokemon, made it sound like there were other animals that were not Pokemon. But the further we get into the franchise, I feel like the less that seems to be the case. Right. Which is really bizarre because I'm pretty sure Oak said that all the Pokemon shared a lot of common genes. Okay. And so that means they're like, it, <laughs> all these Pokemon are just weird mutants. And we're just living on their planet. <laughs> I just, I, how, how uneventful and underwhelming and potentially scary would it be to be like a, a dog or like a regular domestic house cat in the Pokemon world. It'd be horrifying. And you'd be a letdown to everybody. <laughs> or like if you're, what if you're a cow? Oh, you're, you're the cow. We'll eat you. We'll grind you into burgers. But, you know, Mutanks or whatever the cow Pokemon is. Yeah, Miltank yeah. and Tauros. Don't touch him. He's a Pokemon. <laughs> He's special. <laughs> eat that goddamn cow. <laughs> right. Well, we don't, well, we don't and eat then Pokemon. Always... Okay, no, <laughs> there, there, yeah, sorry, ethical question. Can you carve up a mill tank, <laughs> eat some oh of it, God. leave it alive, take it to a Pokemon Center and heal it? The question oh, that doesn't want you to think about. <laughs> right, yeah. Wolf with the with the hard questions. We'll be getting that cease and desist very soon. Well, there's, there's always that kid at school who runs up and you're like, oh man, check it out. You know, I got this cool new thing that everybody has. And it's the off-brand thing that, you know, you had to get from the dollar store. That that was me growing up, so I can make this joke. <laughs> but that kid shows up with a Pokeball. He's like, guys, check it out. I caught, like, a Meowth. And then he opens it, and it's just like a cat. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's like, damn it, Randall. You know, go back to the corner. That's horrible and sad. That's how bullying starts, and it's not funny. <laughs> Shut the fuck but... <laughs> up, Gobot. <laughs> Gobots aren't real Transformers. <laughs> Go back to eat and paste. I, I'm just picturing now somebody taking a cat into Pokemon battle, just pulling out a cat carrier. Like the opponent's like Charizard, go and throws a Pokeball, and then some guy with a cat carrier, just, meow with yeah, go. Let's it. Meow. And it's like it's a house cat. Yeah, literally a house cat. Yeah. And it's like way more feral than <laughs> than any other like yeah. Pokemon you'll ever see. Takes down the Gyarados. <laughs> Yeah. And it gets disqualified, but, like, kind of they should allow it. Yeah. It's like Karate Kid, you know, wins with that illegal kick to the head. <laughs> yeah. But at that point, everybody had already stormed the mat. I'm sorry. We're Feral getting off topic. Rabies. This is my it fault. highly effective. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Press B to cancel. This is how we normally talk. Yeah. I apologize. Sorry. Well, I think sorry. it's yeah, almost is, time to hit B. So let's go ahead and... Uh go around and see what everybody's favorite point in the series was. I think for me, it's pretty safe to say it was just Pokemon Blue, period. I that's I played the crap out of it. I played through it two or three times. I traded for every single Pokemon in that. My friends and I figured out how to do the missing no nonsense and all that. It's Blue holds a special place in my heart that no other entry in the game has in the franchise has been able to replicate. Cool, cool. I think for for me, my favorite moment or or era of Pokemon is the day after I was introduced to Pokemon because I I got the idea of what it was, 
and my mind was like being expanded to see what the rules were for the card game and then gradually introduced to all this other stuff. And it was just this amazingly fun idea. And so to be at the the front door of all the stuff that you know you're about to learn that's going to be awesome, uh, that was that was magic. That was absolute magic. So I, for me, that was my favorite part. You want me? So for me, it's Pokemon. It's when it's a spinoff. That's the stuff I enjoy the most. And I actually quite like what they're doing today or nowadays with it. Uh, Detective Pikachu was probably a good, good spin on it, I believe. There was a game on the 3DS for that. And I just love how it took Pikachu, this beloved character, and he's in he's in this combat situation, or you think he's going to be with his friend there, who has Detective Pikachu. And he's like, Pikachu, use Thunderbolt! And Detective Pikachu just looks at his guy and says, use Thunderbolt! And to me, that's just like <laughs> the funniest thing on the planet, right? Like, humans order around <laughs> animals to do battle, and the animal turning to you and say, what the hell are you talking about? Anyway, I love Detective Pikachu. The, the <laughs> recent movie, the CGI movie, I thought was actually really great. And I hope they do more crazy stuff like that. Like the, the mainline games are fun and all. But when they take Pokemon and put it into different situations that spin off, I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's that's really cool. I like that. And I haven't even seen the movie yet. So now I really want to see it. <laughs> but uh, for me, it's definitely, I want to say sapphire because i was playing it so much like it was probably from like august to december i didn't really play anything else i'd be watching the movie or i'd be watching a movie and i'd be playing the game but uh i think it's just that introduction to sapphire by playing ruby is probably my fondest memory of the entire franchise just because my friend came down out of the blue and it's just one of those things like we were both out of high school and i just remember that it was just is a memory that I'll always cherish, and I don't know. It was just cool. It, it's it's it was like a new era of video games for me. So I think that's fair. All right, so I think we can go ahead and wrap up. Uh, favorite this has Pokemons. been favorite Everybody, Pokemon. Let's list off our favorite Pokemon real quick. Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> oh, Dan- I see. I can't top that. Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> If Randy only Quaid. he Randy were Quaid. Detective Pikachu. Randy Quaid. Honestly, um, if if I could have like a real life Pokemon, I'd want it to be a Growlithe. They're so cool looking. Yeah, they are pretty cool. And I'd feel safe. <laughs> and cuddly. You can't cuddle a Gyarados. I'm not even a cat person, but I liked Persian. Don't know why. I think that silence is a little bit judgmental. Were the three, were I mean, the it, it was a cat that could literally create money out of nothing. So, yeah, um, yeah, that's a great option. That's the only cat, that at I'd least like if you I evolved think. it from Meowth, and Persian was way cooler than Meowth. So, that's true. That's that's good, solid logic. I'll agree with you for there. Not that it's not going to be my favorite, but it's respectable. Hey, Jake, what about you? <laughs> I just like the one. Are you actually, go- I, I like the You're one. You're actually going to go with Ryan Reynolds? No, I'm not going to Ryan Reynolds. I love Ryan- <laughs> Canadian Ryan Reynolds. It's a fantastic Pokemon, but no, I like the one. I don't even know his name, but it's basically a, a steel ring with keys attached, and that's a Pokemon. I love that one. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even kidding. I, I don't know his name. Where is. are you coming up with these? Jingling Key Pokemon is the best of all. Okay, real quick, just to bring this whole thing home, Sick Jake. Did you play with GoBots? <laughs> I think somebody has played a mean trick on you. No, I did not play with GoBots. I had one Optimus Prime, and, and I had my toy. That was it. Turns out he's been talking to Yu-Gi-Oh! or, or Digimon all this time. <laughs> this is pocket monsters, not digital monsters. <laughs> also, I think if if, if you have a, a life that you not, you you want to escape your life, then the Mew, the the Mewtwo, sorry, is the Pokemon that you want. Because then, if he's cool, he can just get in your mind, and you can live whatever life you want. Yeah, that's kind of creepy. Not, that's true. Well, well okay. <laughs> so, what you're gonna have a Mewtwo and introduce people like, "Hey, this is my Pokemon. He's kind of a dick," or you'd be like, "Hey, I don't feel like doing anything today. Can you get in my head and make me think that I'm on Jupiter?" Because that sounds so, cool. So, you're wanting Mewtwo to be your own personal Total Recall. That is exactly what I'm saying. That was perfectly stated. Where I was going to say he wanted a pet Doctor Manhattan, but okay. A pet what? Whoa! Wait a minute. Twelve inch penis on a Pokemon sounds good to me. I got that reference. Oh my god! 
Okay, first off, I have to point out, Stick Jake uses metric. I don't think he knows what 12 inch <laughs> means. So. Oh, man. Uh, well, we found our outtake. I think... I think <laughs> <laughs> sorry, guys. I, and I'm sorry. I've loved this this episode but I'm sorry that I've been the main reason we've gotten off track. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I think it's fine. Mine's fa- my favorite Squirtle, by the way. Dicks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that, there's a good question. What was your starters from Gen 1? Squirtle. Real quick. I always go with the water Pokemon if given a chance. Mine was Charmander. Sucker. I- Being original, I named him Bernie. I use I always went with the fire type or the ones that look like a cat. I was a cat person, unlike half this team. And uh I usually name them stupid things like dog food, frozen peas, cream corn, stuff like that. <laughs> don't don't ask but me never why. Never my dude. Never my dude, no. Uh and actually I was water type too. I went with, with Squirtle. And I kinda wanna change my answer to my favorite being Cubone. Because of how heartbreaking the story is. <laughs> yes, it's true. Uh, uh-huh. I, I love the Q-Bone. Yeah. Well, let's not bring it up here because I don't want to cry. But uh, anybody who's listening, if you don't know the story about Q-Bone, you should check it out because it's... Yeah. It is actually worth looking up. <laughs> so Just, yeah, here's... All you have to Google is whose skull <laughs> is Q-Bone wearing? <laughs> <laughs> and if that's not the most emo shit you've ever heard. Yeah. I love it. Also, I mean, but yeah, uh, the keychain one is nice too, Jake. It's fine. <laughs> I have to look his name up now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this has been Press B to Cancel. I was your host this week. Thank you for having me for a second week now. Who are you? Uh, <laughs> Werewolf. You can oh. find me on Twitch and Twitter. W-A-R-E-W-U-L-F-F. I was going to leave it to the imagination this time, but thank you. All right, Paul, sh- take it away. Hi, my name is Sick Jake. You can find me on Twitter as well as... Oh, wait, no. I'm Polsh109. You can find me on Twitch at Polsh109. P-A-L-S-H-109. Sometimes. And Jake? All right, now I, oh, Art, sorry. GP? Nope, nope, go for it. Go for it, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, GP. For the record, his name is Klefki. Klefki, the keychain Pokemon. He resembles a key ring with four keys and a spherical head and a small pink oval on his forehead. Anyway... That's that's his life story. That's pretty much it. It's also dark and jingly. My name is Sick Jake. You can find me, Sick Jake, on Twitter or on Twitch. I'm a part-time, biannual, never streamer. And then our resident derailer, GP. Uh, yeah, this is GP. Uh, typical spelling. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and you can find me on The Retro Therapy, which is, uh, of course, on Twitch. Uh, we're also on Twitter and Instagram as The Retro Therapy. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Press B to Pikachu. (laughs) Insert music here. (laughs) Wait, that's not how the song goes. Thank you for watching this week's episode. Hit subscribe and that bell to be notified of all our future videos. For audio versions of our podcasts, please check out Apple or Google Podcasts, Spotify and Stitcher, or anywhere else you like to listen to your favorite shows. As well, feel free to visit our website at breastbeatacancel.com.